Okay, so by now we introduced conditional PDFs and conditional PMFs. And let me just refresh on our notation for that. Right, so if I had a um, discrete Y, then I would have a PMF. And if I had a continuous Y, then I would have a PDF, right? Either way, it's like saying, I show you X, and now you revise your distribution of Y, either discrete or continuous, based on this new information, right? So now that I know these PDFs or PMFs, I can compute expectations if I wanted to, right? So, for example, the expected value of Y, given some value of xk when y is discrete would be the normal way of saying y times the conditional PMF of getting that value. This would be like the discrete version. And in the continuous world, this would be like saying I would integrate over the possible values of y times the conditional PDF dy, right? This would be like the discrete or the continuous version, right? So in either way, this is a number that will depend on the value of x, right? So these are both things that are kind of like integrating out the value of y, okay? So in a way, we can think about these numbers as a new random variable that depends on x. So this is a little bit mind-bending because I've got a couple layers, but the idea is that, you know, we can think about these expectations as a new random variable that depends on x. That is, I have a random variable I'm going to call g of x that is the expected value of y given x. That is, I do an experiment to get x, then I compute um, this value y that depends on x, and I compute the expected value of that, right? So I can kind of ask, what is the expected value of this? All right, so this is kind of like a nested or an iterated expected value. So let's think about this. The expected value of this function of x, well, this is a function of x, so I should compute it with respect to the PDF of x, right? That's a dx, okay? And now I say, okay, well, what is this definition? This is actually the expected value of y given x, times this PDF. What is this expected value? Well, this is actually now another integral. This is like saying I take y times the conditional PDF dy. Then I have the remaining outside part dx. Okay. Now I can say, okay, well, I'm going to move the you know, integrals around, and I'm going to have in here, I have a conditional part and a marginal part, and this is like dx dy. And now I say, hey, well, actually, this thing here is the joint PDF of x and y together. So kind of what I have is the integral of y times this thing here d x dy. But this part, integrating out the, this is just the marginal in y, right? So this is just the integral y times this marginal function dy. And this is just the definition of the expected value of y. So this is like a long way to go just to kind of come up with the answer that seems kind of logical and obvious, which is that we have discovered what's called the law of 
iterated expectations. That is that the expected value of the expected value of y given x is actually the same as the expected value of y. Okay. Or to put it a different way, the expected value of the expected value of any function of y given x is just the expected value of h of x. Uh, h of y, sorry. Okay. So that is, we think of computing this expected value in two steps, right? First, we compute the expected value conditioned on some value of x, and then we do an outer expectation condition, conditioned on all the possible values that x can take. Okay. Why do we care about this? It seems like so roundabout, right? The reason that we care about it is sometimes it's more convenient to do this computation than it is to do that computation. And so I'll do a couple examples of this in the next couple lessons to show you why this works. Okay, so let me just stop here and we'll do examples in the next couple lessons.